everything was just negative. I felt rubbish about myself because of um, how I felt about my disability. My running wasn't going great. And then because I wasn't feeling good, that was affecting my running. So it was just like a vicious cycle. Um, and I think I was 18 at this point and um, I'd finished a race and I just had a bit of a, a breakdown um, with my mum in the car. I was like, listen, I just feel so rubbish. Uh, I've got nothing going for me. Like I've not really got any friends, got no social life. I feel really insecure. My running's not going great. Um, and I went to the doctor and I was diagnosed with anxiety and depression. Teenager, probably from the age of 14 to 18. Um, so yeah, I just became a bit more aware of like disability and then I kind of like, oh, how, how, like, yeah, just so worried about what people thought about me. Um, I started to like, yeah, kind of isolate myself and I would really then just focus on my running. Um, that was a way to kind of distract myself from the kind of the feelings that I was experiencing like just that's that anxiety and a little bit of depression around like you know I think coming to terms with having a disability and just yeah worry worrying about what people thought about that I didn't I never I've never had or I never had anybody at school like my peers say anything negative about my disability but I think it was just that fear of like what people were thinking about it was I being judged um so then I used my running I would kind of say oh I can't go into school today I've got this competition or this camp <laughs> really I didn't uh, I would just be at home a lot um or go to like training and that and the school were like, oh yeah that's fine you can do that so I was yeah kind of using the running as a bit of like a shield to kind of because I wasn't comfortable being around people my own age um and it I think when you're just just so focused and like you're everything's so narrow just like specifically just running and when the running maybe wasn't going as well as I wanted to say if I had a bad race or maybe didn't get the result I wanted to then because that was all I had in my life at that point everything was negative so there was no like real balance I hated going to Asda because I was like oh god I'm going to see somebody I know and I'm like what are they going to think about me um, stuff like that it was yeah just worry and then it was even things like I'd occasionally be in because I, I I'd occasionally be invited to something um and like I really dread going somewhere social like even if it's just to meet a friend for a coffee or like go for a walk or not let alone like going to a party and that would like really like I'd worry about it for a week like leading up to the point and up to the point I'd be like oh no I can't go and then I think when you start saying you can't go to stuff, people like kind of like, oh, she's not interested, so I won't invite her. And then when you stop getting invited to things, then it's like, oh, like you feel lonely again, but it's kind of a bit of self-sabotage. Um, so yeah, probably just like worry, worry and dread, just that like at the thought of like meeting people and like, oh God, worrying about what they think. So I would get annoyed with myself because I'm, I'm making myself unhappy deliberately. Um, so yeah, probably yeah, resentment towards myself and kind of the situation I put myself in. I wasn't helping the way I was feeling. I would go to a competition or even it was just training and I'd get anxious about going to training. Get the thought of like, oh my God, how am I going to run? Like what times am I going to run at training? I'd get all these voices in my head. And it, like, I, I think like even just, yeah, the dread going to training, cause I, like, I love training, like, I love training more than I do the competition, if I'm honest. So like, like looking at it now, I'm like, yeah, the, the sun really not right there. And when I was getting like voices and that, and I was just, yeah, after that race, I had a massive kind of breakdown in front of my mum in the car on the way home. I was like, I'm just like so unhappy um, with just how, like with everything that's going on like 
I just feel really, really quite lonely. Um, I feel like I've not really got much going on for myself, like outside of my running, my running's not going great. And um, yeah, um, we're like, well, maybe we need to go and speak to somebody and get some help. So I went to like the doctors um, a couple of days after that and yeah, I was diagnosed with anxiety and depression and started taking medication for that. And yeah, it was quite a, quite a miserable time because um, you kind of hear of these things, but it's a bit of like, oh, like that, a big shock or almost a bit of shame to like getting diagnosed with something like that. He's reaching storm pace. That's time for so the TikTok, so we were approached, a few of us were approached when we were, when we headed out to Tokyo for the Paralympic Games. I kind of did a couple of videos of that um, and people enjoyed that. But then I was like, you know what, I, like videos I find funny are maybe a little bit like dark humour, maybe a bit risky and <laughs> stuff like that. I remember um, and my roommate, uh, Polly Mason, was like, yeah, we'd like to do a video. And I think when I first video was kind of like what kind of people or what was it boys thought about disability and that and it kind of blew up quite a lot um, and we like said these like quite outrageous things and people asked us like really funny and we got quite like a really good positive response so I started like kind of continuing doing videos I don't like I don't do TikTok properly like I know there's people that do it like every single day I kind of do it when I feel like it but I, I, I've managed I get people that comment and follow me and say, "Oh, I've got really my I've got mild cerebral palsy too. I've never seen somebody that is similar to me and shares the same thing. They're like they find what I'm saying funny and relatable. So I kind of stuck at it. Uh, I, I, like I find it funny. I quite enjoy it. I don't really take it seriously. Um, and I've managed to, like have a a very wee following, but still like there's quite a lot of people that engage in my stuff who are similar to me, um, so it's quite nice. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how it all came around. So it's been three or four years since like I kind of got diagnosed with anxiety, depression. I've overcome that, um, and I'm like very comfortable within myself, and I, I love joking about my disability. But like, there's every so often it's like when people make comments and I was like, well, like where do I fit in then? Because obviously I don't use a wheelchair. I'm not missing any limbs or that. So it's maybe not the most visible disability. But I have one and it's like, I, I can't say I have a blue badge. Um, like I use that park in the disabled bay and quite a lot I'll get like a negative stare. Or like I'll have some middle-aged woman like come up and like challenge me. And it, it, sometimes it gets to the point it's like, I can't be bothered arguing with someone, so I'll just park in a normal space, even though I'm entitled to use the blue badge space. You know, dating, for example, like, I've just started doing that like online dating, and it's been like an absolute nightmare. Like, most of the time it's fine, but it's things like somebody will be, oh, yeah, no, I think you're like, they'll swipe for you, whatever. But then when you say, like, oh, yeah, by the way, I have disability, then that's like a big thing. So it's like, yeah I don't know and then things like yeah at the cart like using the blue badge like I'm yeah I'm not disabled enough I don't look disabled enough to park there even though I've got my blue badge and I'm explaining but then I'm too disabled for somebody to want to keep chatting to me or whatever so it's like where do I fit in like I don't fit in anywhere like and it's hard and it's like and I feel like I can't complain or not that I complain, I don't really complain, but I can't make comments about like how I'm feeling about my disability because the people say, oh, there's people much worse off than you, or there's nothing wrong with you. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I, like, I feel like my feelings are just as much um, important or valid to somebody else, say if they're in a wheelchair or they're not in a wheelchair. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a hard, it's hard gray area. I think now, um, I'm very comfortable with my disability. Um, it's given me lots of different opportunities um, within life, sport. I've made loads of friends, I've met people, and um, it's given me um, 
just a, a different outlook in life. I feel like I'm a better person because of it. A more caring, compassionate person. Um, and I'm a bit more understanding as well. Um, it's given me um, a platform for humour. <laughs> I can um, I can joke about it, um, and um, it's always, it's always, you can always tell good stories on a night out <laughs> with it. Um, and I'm not going to. I don't feel embarrassed about it. Like this is me. I, I, like I, I can't change anything. There's no point. I know. You can, there's times it's hard, but I'm not going to be resentful and hate the world because of it or feel uncomfortable or feel like I have to dial myself down or hide myself away because of it. Like, get one life. I'm not going to waste it away worrying about what people think. It's, take, it's taking the time and a lot of effort to get to that point. Um, but yeah, I'm just like, that's me and there's nothing I can do about that and why would I want to do a hand like that? I'm, I'm, I live my life the same as everybody else. Um, hasn't really stopped me from doing anything, and I'm not gonna be worried or ashamed about it. Um, so yeah, just I think take it as it is. If people want to have an issue about it, they can. But the people that really matter and care about you, they'll just accept you for who you are. So yeah, that's about it. <laughs>